Hello and welcome, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be finishing up our 360 video player by creating our feedback system and our own custom events within our video manager. So we'll need to be opening up both our feedback script as well as our video manager. And here we are within our video manager script. And you may be thinking to yourself, Andrew, I thought we finished the video manager in the last video. And you would be mostly right, because we're mostly done with it. We just need to create some events that are going to be used within our feedback script. Since we created the properties for is paused and is video ready, if we expand those and our get and our set, we'll remember that we have the ready event comment here that we need to implement. And then let's look at our namespaces really quick. And we do have this unity engine.events namespace, so we can create our own custom event class. And we're going to collapse that and we'll just scroll to the bottom here where we're going to be creating a public class called video event and it's going to inherit from unity event and then we're going to give it the little carrots here and you'll notice that we have four different things that we can put here and these are for any arguments that we want to put into our custom video event and for us we're going to be putting in a boolean value and we'll be making the actual body of the class empty and what we basically just did here is we created our own class called video event that inherits from the unity event so we can give it our own custom argument so when we're calling it we'll be giving it a boolean value that we'll be able to use within our feedback so let's create the variables for it and you'll see the implementation and how it actually works and we'll create two new public video event variables one called on pause and we'll initialize it to a new video event same thing for on load. And we'll expand is pause as well. And we can get rid of this comment. And we'll write on pause invoke. And then we'll put our is paused value. What's what's happening here? Every time that we set our is paused variable using our property, it's going to invoke this event. And there are going to be other scripts within our project that are going to be subscribing to, to this event, similar to how we were subscribing to the events from the video player in the last video. So as an example, every time we hit the spacebar in the editor, it's going to cause that pause toggle function, which is going to switch that variable and going to be setting it to this property. And then we're going to be sending that value to our feedback script so we know whether to show or hide the pause icon. And we can do this because we did create that custom video event that we can pass in a Boolean value. Because if we didn't, if we just had the basic unity event, we wouldn't have any values with it. So it would just say, hey, something happened, but we don't know if it was played or paused, but it did change. So we need to give it a specific value so we can respond to it accordingly. All right, enough of that event. Now let's go down here and we'll be doing the same thing for our is video is ready. And we'll just be calling on load, invoke, and is video ready. So every time we set the is video ready property, we're gonna be letting our program know if the video is loaded or not. And that's actually it for our video manager. Now let's go into our feedback script where it's not a particularly difficult script, we have four functions to write and they're all pretty simple. The first thing that we need to do though is write some variables. So we'll have one for our distance. And this is the distance that we're gonna be having that sprite render from our camera. And we're gonna initialize it to 2.5. So you may want it to be closer or farther. You would do it with this number here. We want a reference to our video manager. Initialize that to null, and then we'll create a little header here for our icons. Because we're going to need two sprites here, one for our pause and one for our load. So do public sprites pause, initialize that to null, and pretty much the same thing for our load. And then we want a reference to our sprite renderer. And we'll have a private void awake, a private void on destroy, 
And as you can imagine, these are going to be for setting up our events. And then we're going to have three functions here. One that we're going to be calling setup with camera. Another for toggling our pause and another for our load. And that's all the simple stuff for the script. We can scroll down here since we don't need to pay attention to our variables too much. And we'll be starting in our wake where the first thing that we need to do is get our sprite renderer. So we'll be calling a simple get component. We'll then be calling setup with camera. And what this function is going to do is get the main camera on our camera rig and it's going to position itself in front of it. So anytime that we need to give it a new sprite and activate it or deactivate it, it's already going to be in position and ready to go. And I did this because I didn't want to just child it to the camera within the scene, because if I ever wanted to change the icons or any of the values, I usually try to keep the nesting of the hierarchy pretty clean if I can help it. So I don't want to have to always dig down within the camera rig to find something. It's just going to already be in my scene and easily accessible. And also if someone's new and they're coming to the project, they can have a better reference at a glance what's going on in the screen. So they'll see the feedback object and they'll say, oh, hey, what's this? And then they'll see that it does exist and then it does attach itself to the camera rig on a wake rather than it just being nested within the camera rig. And you can only really know if it's there if you have previous knowledge of it. And that's it for that. Now we need to subscribe to our events. So we'll be using our video manager reference. We'll be accessing on pause. And these are going to be a little bit different than the ones we wrote previously. That instead of using that plus equals, we're going to be using add listener. And this is more specific to Unity events. And the function that's going to be listening for any actions that's going to be occurring is our toggle pause. Pretty simple. We can copy this line. And we'll change this, this to on load. And we'll be subscribing our toggle load. And then like before, we added our listeners and then let's remove them on destroy. Because again, let's be consistent. Because if we're not, there's going to be that instance where we forget to put it on there and everything comes crumbling down. That may not really happen, but sometimes it does. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we need to do when we're setting up our camera is we need to set the parent of our feedback object. So we'll go transform.parent and we'll use camera.main and we'll get that camera's transform. So at this point, our feedback is going to be connected to the head, but it's not going to be positioned correctly. One quick note about camera.main, since we're only using it this one time, I'm not going to have a variable within the script for it. But if you're going to be using camera main a lot for any of your projects, make sure that you do cache it somewhere because it's basically an encapsulated tag check. There's nothing too fancy about it. And then after that, we want to get our transform again and set our local rotation and we'll set it to quaternion.identity. So it's all zeroed out and good. And then we want to use our local position. And we'll be setting that to a new vector three where our x is 0, our y is 0, and our z is going to be that distance of 2.5. So it's attaching itself to the headset, it's rotating to 0, so it's facing the headset correctly, and then we're just positioning it that distance away. So that's all quite simple. Then we have our toggle pause, we have our sprite renderer, we have our sprite value that we can get from that sprite renderer and set it. And we'll be setting it to that pause icon that we have up at the top. And then we want to show it or hide it based on whether the video is paused or not. Because if you remember, since we do have that custom event, we have that Boolean value. So if it's paused, obviously we want to show the sprite renderer. And if we're playing it, we don't want to show it. So we'll just get access our sprite renderer again. And we'll just write enable. And it's going to be just based on that is pause Boolean value. So there you go, it's quite simple. And then we can just copy this really quick 
paste it into our toggle load. And anytime we are loading a video, we want to show the load sprite and not the pause sprite. And then we'll change the is paused value. And the is loaded is going to be a little bit different where we just want to use the inverse. So we'll put an exclamation mark here that just says is loaded. Because if the video is loaded, then it's obviously ready to go. And we don't want to show the sprite renderer when the video is playing. So that's why we use the exclamation mark. And that's about it for our feedback. Now we just need to go into Unity and set up our references and we'll be good to go. All right, so let's click on our feedback object where we need to give it a reference to our video manager. We have our icons here. We have our pause and our load. And I think that's it. Let's hit start. I mean, let's hit play. <laughs> and I'll hold control so we can look around. And if I hit the space bar, we get our pause, and since it's childed to our camera, it's going to move along with our headset. And if I hit the spacebar again, it's going to play. And then if I hit the right arrow, we're going to get the load because it's loading to the next video. And then if I press my up or my down arrow, we're going to get that little loading icon again to let us know that the video is seeking. And then it goes away once it's completed. And then right there, it just showed it to us again because the video had completed and it was going to the next one. Now I'm going to build this out and test it on my Oculus Quest to see if all of our inputs and things are working there. All right, and now that we have our project loaded onto our Oculus Go, we can use our primary triggers on our left and our right controller to seek within the video. We can use the A or the X button to toggle the play and the pause of the current video. And then we can press the grip trigger on the left or the right controller to go to our previous or our next video. And everything looks to be in working order. And that about does it for this video and this series. If you have any issues, feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you in the next one.